Hello everyone, my name is Anita, USRN. Today I am going to talk about do this calculations and uh, we are going to practice several questions and discuss its answer. So today we will cover terms, formula related to do this calculations and we will be doing several questions and we will be practicing its answer. Now I have a special an announcement for you all that is I will be sending endless related resources and materials and you will also get chance to be involved in my online classes for that you need to be subscribed to my channel and you need to fill the form given in the description box below so the selected students will be getting free and clicks resources and online classes so go and grab the opportunity now let's see the terms related to calculations so this is how the medicine is entering the body so there might be various places or various roads from where medicine enters that might be iv oral or topically and medications it is the actual component that is completing the effect so the component that uh, we use or that we take or that is com completing the effect into the body so that we can feel better now next we have dose dose is the amount of medicines or component that is being administered to the patient next desired dose the desired dose is the dose that the health care provider prescribes to the person next we have is available dose available dose is the strength as stated on the medication label that means the label that is given in the bottle vials or in the tablets while buying the medications so sometimes it differs uh, with the dose ordered by the physician so we need to calculate the dose so that we can give correct amount of medication to the patient next we have something called matrix table so in this table uh, we can see like a thousand micrograms equals to one milligram so we need to be thorough with all these terms and its conversion because this is very vital while doing different forms of calculations in um, NCLEX or as a nurse we need to be balanced with all these terms its conversion because it's very vital even while practicing bedside or even doing different calculations now let's see some of the formula that's gonna be very useful while doing the calculations first of all for oral medications so in oral forms we can have tablet or even capsules or sometimes even we have oral expansion so for tablets we need to calculate the number of tablets that we need to administer to the patient so the formula is desired dose by available dose into tablet that is medicine label that is given in the tablet so we have already in terms desired dose or available dose so i think you are clear with this so next is oral or parenteral medicine that is the medicine which is in liquid form so formula for this is desired dose by stock dose into dilutions so dilution in dilution means the label given in the medicines Next we have IVF rate. To calculate ml per hour we have the formula total volume that is to be in ml into drop factor that is GT factor. So it is divided by number of hours. Next we have GTT per minute that is volume in cc into GTT factor by number of hours that should be in minutes. So it is calculated or multiplied by 60 minutes so to convert hours into minute we need to multiply by 60 minutes so it's number of hours into mi minute given over here next we have infusion time so infusion time is total volume to infuse in ml by milliliter per hour that is to be infused so let's go through the situation and try to solve the problem. In situation 1, 
A patient is ordered 120 mg of tablet A, that is, that may be any form of tablet, for order. The medicine is available in 40 mg tablets. How many tablets do you give? So, you need to calculate the number of tablet that is to be given. So, this is oral medicine tablet questions. So, to calculate the number of tablets, we already know the formula that is desired uh, dose of an available dose into tablets. So, desired dose here is 120 mg. So, here 120 mg by available dose. This is available 40 mg. So, it is divided by 40 mg and 40 mg is present in one tablet. So, one tablet has been written over here. So, by calculating all these, we get three tablets. So, three tablets is answer for these questions. I hope this is clear for you all. Let's go to next situations. In situation 2, the patient is ordered 35 mg of mepiridine IMQ for our PRN for pain. The medicine in the ampule marks 50 mg per hour. How much of medicine should the nurse give? So this is parental medications. Let's try to solve this problem. So what we know is dose in ml is equals to desired dose by stock dose and is multiplied by dilution. Dilution means that uh, level that is given in the medicine. So here it is 1 ml. So desired dose here is 35 mg. This is desired means ordered by the physician that is 35 mg is being ordered so this is the desired dose then this is to be divided by stock dose means that is like available dose like available in the ampule so stock dose ampule marks 50 mg per ml so this is the stock dose so 35 should be this is desired dose 35 is divided by 50 mg and dilution means it is 50 mg per ml. So it is in ml. So it is multiplied by 1 ml. So we get 0 0.7 ml. So nurse should administer only 0 0.7 ml to the patient. I hope this is clear. Let's go to the next situation. Situation 3. Here. The doctor orders for an oral suspension 50 mg by mouth every 4 hour PRN. You are dispensed with a bottle that levels 25 mg per 2 ml. How many spoon will you administer per dose? This is oral suspension and you need to calculate how many spoon you should be giving to the patient. So, we have already known the metric table. There you can see the conversion. So, we, we need to calculate this situation or this thing accordingly. Now, let's see how to solve this problem. So, what is given over here with the questions? So the ordered dose here is 50 mg Q4 hourly. And it, uh, the supplied is here. So, ordered dose is 50 mg Q4 hourly and a bottle levels 25 mg per 2 ml so this is supplied dose now we have to find how many tablespoons we need to be giving to the patient so what we know is desired dose by stock dose into dilution this is our formula we have already gone through it so now let's calculate so desired dose is 50 mg desired dose is 50 mg and available dose that is 25 mg per 2 ml so available is 25 25 mg is present in 2 ml so we will be multiplying by 2 ml now after calculating this we will get 4 ml so 4 ml should be given to the patient but it is asked how many teaspoon will you be giving so so we have already known from the matrix table that 1 teaspoon equals to 5 ml. So here 1 ml equals to 1 teaspoon by 5 ml. So uh, means 1 teaspoon equals to 5 ml and 1 ml means uh, so now 4 ml equals to we need to multiply by 4 ml. So we get 0 0.8 teaspoon. So 0 0.8 teaspoon of medication should be administered to the patient. Now let's see next situation. In this situation, the patient is ordered 
20,000 units of heparin to be given subcutaneously every day. Heparin is available in a 5,000 unit per 0.5 ml concentration. How much of the medication should patient take? Now, let's solve this problem. So, what we know, by this is the formula. Desired dose by stop dose into dilution. All the formula is same. So, desired dose is here. The dose prescribed by the physician. That is 20,000 units. So, this is 20,000 unit divided by stock dose. Means available dose. That is 5,000. This is 5,000. 5,000 unit is present for 0.5 ml. So, we, this is dilution. So, we need to multiply by 0.5 ml. And we get 2 ml. So, 2 ml of heparin should be administered to the patient every day. I think it's clear for you all. Let's see the next situation. Situation 5. The doctor orders to infuse 2 liter of normal saline with 50 mq potassium chloride over 24 hours. The drip factor here is 15 ZTG per ml. How many drops per minute, that is ZTG per minute, will be administered? So, this is IV drip calculation. What we have here is, order dose is 2 liter of NS over 24 hours. And drip factor given here is 15 ZTG per minute. So, what we know? We know already, uh, we have already discussed this um, formula, that is ZTG per minute equals to volume in ML into ZTG factor divided by number of hours. So, it's an hours into 60 minutes because hours, when converting hours into minutes, we need to multiply by 60. So, volume is a 2 liter, right? Volume is 2 liter, so we need to convert into ml. We already know from the matrix table that 1 liter equals to 1000 ml, so we need to multiply by 1000. 2 into 1000 into ZTT factor. ZTT factor is given over here that is 15. Multiply by 15 and this all is divided by 24 hours. That is time period. This is hour. We need to find drops per minute. So we need to multiply by 60. This means we are converting hours into minute. 24 hours multiply by while converting into minute we need to multiply by 60. So we are multiplying by 60. If it's asked in hour we we are not supposed to multiply. We, just, we can just write the time given in the hour. So, by calculating this first part, we get 30,000. And second part, we get 1,404. So, now by calculating this part, we get 20.8. So, surrounding this figure, we get 21 drops per minute. I hope this is clear for you all. Let's see the next situation. The doctor orders to infuse 2 liter normal saline over 48 hours. What is hourly rate? So this is IV drip. We need to calculate ml per hour. So what is given in the question? So here we have order doses 2 liter that is to be infused over 24 hours. To calculate ml per hour we have the formula that is total volume in ml and number of hours. So this is the simple formula. So total volume here is 2 liter. So it should, it should be converted into ml. We already know from the matrix table that 1 liter is equal to 1000 ml. So it should be multiplied by 1000 ml. 2 into 1000 divided by total time here is 48 hours. So it's, it's divided by 48 hours. Which is equals to 41.6 ml per hour. So rounding the figure we get 42 ml per hour. That's the answer. So, we always need to round the figure whenever we are calculating the dose. So, uh, we, I have uh, 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 rounded this figure and I get 42 ml per hour. Let's see the next situation. Situation 7. The doctor orders to infuse 2 liter of normal saline. You start the infusion at 0800 that is 8 am. At what time will the infusion be completed? This is also IV infusion time calculation. So what is given in the question? That is order dose. That is 2 liter at 150 ml per hour. So the starting time is 8 am. 
we need to find time of completion of the trip. So what we know from the beginning that I have already discussed in the formula that is infusion time equals to total volume to be infused in ml by milliliters per hour being infused. So from the metric table we know liter 1 liter equals to 1000 ml so by converting into uh, 2 liters into ml we get 2000 ml. Now the total volume to infuse is 2000 ml. So 2000 ml is divided by total ml of infused per hour. So this is divided by 150 ml per hour. What we get here is 13.33 hour. This ml and this ml gets cancelled so we have hour. So we have 13.33 hour. This means that the given volume of drip that is 2 liter 2000 ml will be completed in 13.33 hour if we infuse 150 ml per hour. So now we need to find the time. So this 13.33 hours should be added to this time to get the actual time in which trip is gonna finish. But we have 13.33 hours. So now let's convert 0.33 hour into minutes. So to convert this into minute, we need to multiply by 60 minutes. So by multiplying 0.33 hour into 60 minutes, we get 19.8 minutes. So by rounding this figure, we get 20 minutes. So it's total time needed for the infusion of 2 liter fluid at the rate of 150 ml per hour. It takes 13 hour 20 minutes. So this time should be added to the starting time and we get the time in which fluid is going to finish. Time is 0800 that is 8 am plus 13 hours 20 minutes. So by converting this we get 2120 that means 920 pm but we are not supposed to write um, time in this form. We need to write in this form 2122. So this is the way in which we write the time as a nurse. I hope this is clear to you all. Let's see the next situation. In situation 8, the doctor prescribes 30 mg of potassium chloride to be added in 1000 ml of normal saline and to be administered over 12 hours period. The level on the medicine bottle is 14 mg uh, per 20 ml. How many milliliter of potassium chloride should be added to normal saline? So this, is, this question is for you all to practice. You can practice and try to find the answer and you can comment your answer in the comment box below. We will be discussing this question in my next video. So practice this question and post your comment or answer in the comment box below. I hope all the situation, calculation and all the terms are clear to you all. I have tried to explain in simpler form so that you can understand. And this Questions that we practice today are similar to ANCLIS examination question. So I hope this will be helpful for you all in your ANCLIS journey. So as I mentioned in the beginning of video 2, I have a special gift for you all that is ANCLIS related material and resources that I will be uh, sharing with few students who are subscribed to my channel and who have filled the form that is given in the description box below. So please subscribe and give the free resources and online classes. Please wait for my next video. I'll be discussing more questions and I'll try to explain in simpler form because I know you all are working really hard and I will try to share my experience and knowledge in simpler form so that it can be helpful for you all. Please solve the problem and wait for my next video.